Hey everyone, this is Joe from Thunk Tank Podcast, and thanks for joining us today here on our latest episode, All About Pollution. Uh, we decided to split this one up into a couple parts, so this first part will really be focusing on the historical context of pollution as we know it today, how we got to this point of modern-day globalized pollution and how that ties into um, other issues such as global warming, the politics surrounding pollution, and also how our fellow podcaster here, Luke, wound up in a frog suit for this episode. So that you can see on the live stream, which we did our first live stream for this episode, and we will link in the description um, along with this episode. So you might want to give that a gander, as well as check us out on Patreon for bonus content. We have some good stuff going on over there. And if you have any questions or further topics that you would like us to cover, we have some great topics coming up in the next few episodes. Um, but yeah, please feel free to share and uh, tell us your ideas. Other than that, hope you enjoy and see you in the thunk tank. Okay, you ready? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the thunk tank. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Welcome. To, come into our. Come into our Thunk Tank. <laughs> Luke, don't switch <laughs> to the other peanuts. <laughs> Welcome to the Thunk Tank. Come in the tank. <laughs> we're thinking, and we're thinking, <laughs> and we're thunked. <laughs> and we're thunked. <laughs> I think that might be the one. All right, we're officially recording the podcast. It's been a while since we've it's done Thunk Tank. We've, we've had a lot of summer hijinks going on. But if, you're, hijinks. if you're watching us on Instagram, like you people. Who's watching us? Somebody's watching Go us. over to YouTube. We have uh, a live stream on YouTube with like our soundboard audio, yeah. I think. Um, we, we think, plausibly. Joe, while I get our first beer going, can yeah. you explain to the fine Thunk Tank viewers why I'm in a frog suit? Oh, yeah, so shout out to uh, Duluth Atheist, right, uh, for providing us with this very lovely Luke Frog suit. Long, very long story short, we had a few beers one, one episode. I think it was just that one episode. Yeah, it was just yeah. a few beers. That's yeah, it. Yeah, we just had a few beers, and um, Luke may or may not had, have mentioned that he would wear a frog suit if uh, somebody donated one. And lo and behold... Somebody donated. Somebody a donated a frog <laughs> suit, and here, here we are. And I thought it an appropriate outfit for our episode on environmentalism and pollution and all that. Yeah, that was planned ahead of time. Um, you know, I support frogs. Yeah, frog. Uh, frogs are important. Um, so I, I've uh, done some research. A few lessons learned. One Rainbow is connection. that I will be way more careful about. <laughs> what i say I think and the first, promises i make that's first and foremost yeah yeah um and uh anyways you guys can actually now see the beer that we're drinking so if that's we forget, very exciting yeah um if you're watching on youtube by the way let us know if the audio sounds good we're, we're not totally sure nobody's watching on youtube that's fine <laughs> but <laughs> that might be for the best we'll find out if um you know like oh it's we set things up properly or whatever god we're such luddites. Like, what happens if you hit that microphone joe oh is it not on I don't know. I'm just making sure. Now's the time to figure it out. No, no. Yeah, that one. Oh, that's mute. Don't hit that. Yeah, no, that would be bad to hit. All right, anyways. For the whole thing. Well, we can cut around this in post. Any any, any technical... There is no post. It's live. <laughs> it, oh, shit. You're right. Yeah, but nobody's watching, so we'll be... Um, so I'm cracking a Julius. Just took a recent visit up uh, to Treehouse in would Massachusetts. You, would you say you hopped on up there? Uh, yep. Yep, it's begun. <laughs> <laughs> and let the beer pour begin. So, yeah. yeah um, how'd, you, uh, how'd you like your trip up there? What do you have to say to the good people at Treehouse? Uh, it was easier than ever compared to, like, in the past where you had to wait on insane lines. You know, maybe for, like, their yeah. most epic releases on a Saturday, you're, you're still going to have to deal with getting there really early and yeah, waiting sure. on a line but and all that that's stuff. True for, that's true for a lot of places. But yeah, that's of course. Yeah. But I'm saying like their operation has gotten so big yeah. that like the past two times I went there was on a Thursday, and I got there at like four. They yeah. open at twelve, and they still had cans of yeah. every beer that they were offering. Um, 
you know, I wasn't really in on Treehouse on the early days, so I can't say as to like whether the qualities changed at all from like their their original days to like now kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I <laughs> are you taste testing? It's good. It's good. It's yeah. good. So if you, if you haven't tried Treehouse, um, definitely if if you get a chance, try it. It's, I think it's it's one of the best breweries out there for sure. Yeah. I mean, they they have such a unique, um, like, flavor profile for some of their beers. Like, the, the green, I think we both agree, is probably one of our favorite beers, right? I would say so. That and would, That would have been so so appropriate if you had gotten green. Fuck! Yeah, they didn't have green. <laughs> of course they didn't. It's one of the best beers, I think, in history, maybe. I just mean they, they only release, you know, what they happen to release. Please send us cases. If you uh, that Julius else. was canned yesterday, for example. This is pretty good Julius. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very I'm, cold, I'm very fresh. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll announce a few other beers as we crack them. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll be going through. Uh, what's several, that sound? Several beers. Ow. I don't know. I think your your frog and ten eye are are in, in, interfering. With interfering. The, yeah, with the, uh, the the wires. That's probably my phone. Oh yeah, get the, get that out of here. We don't. Uh, so Joe, why don't you introduce today's topic? Uh, y- if you're watching this on YouTube, we usually put some kind of uh intro on our our normal episodes uh, so do we, yeah i don't think the youtube version yeah. will have that how would we however yeah. that works so um joe just give a, a, a quick what are we talking about today we're gonna try and do it in a part one part two yeah johnny's gonna to. be able to join us for part two he he better join us for part two because it's not it's not the same without that crazy crazy genie man it's also been a while apologies to you thunk tank listeners it's been a while since we even had an episode had an episode like <laughs> we're talking weeks probably right yeah well we we've all had our our our, our summer so i i was you know at a writer's conference doing professional uh development which is really just drinking but you know also professional development so yeah we've we've been sort of busy but we're back we're we're drinking we're green and i think we're good to go so today's episode we wanted to talk about um a little bit about pollution and not just pollution is sort of what you hear in the news of just, I guess, politicized issues of pollution. But I think it's important to think about the larger historical context of pollution, right? And sort of look at how we, we've gotten to where we are today in terms of the, the effects of, of pollution in a, in a sort of globalized sense, you know, starting with historically and then, of course, how much things changed uh, in the industrial era and how in a, in a lot of senses we, we haven't, I don't know if recovered is the right word for that, but I, I feel like that, that is sort of an appropriate word, how we haven't quite recovered from um, just the, the, the change in, in the impacts that pollution has both locally and now much more globally. So I It's think- also, it's, it's one of those problems that it can't be like one country fixing it, you know? Well, it's not even close to that. Like being, World being War II, now. it's like... Trying to figure out what that is exactly. Um, World War Two was like, maybe it's the frog suit, dude. I think your frog suit is interfering. Um, World War Two was one of those things that, like, oh, like if the U.S. didn't go enter the war, like we maybe would be looking at a different world, you know. And yeah. that was something where a country single-handedly could do like a, a gigantic thing. Yeah. Now, of course, you could do stuff with like pollution, and in a way, like you know, lead by example, that kind of thing. Yeah. But unless like you get China and India and these giant polluters, like, you know, the most polluted cities in the world are in countries like Iran and Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And China and China. You know, it's funny you mentioned world war two as well, because I read an article once about how, um, there was a, a period during world war two where there was such a shutdown of the fisher fishing industry because it was, it was so dangerous you know, like because all the countries are at war, you can't just go out fishing. That there was actually a boom in fish populations. Oh, because people yeah. just weren't. Fishing I think. As did much. you talk about that on our oceans episode by I mean, chance? Who, who knows? But yeah. pro- but it would be appropriate because it's like that. That says something about the the utterly devastating impact that humans, even when they're just fishing, have on the environment. Right now, fair enough. Like there is an extent to which. You can't hate on the fact that we have an impact on the environment. Well, everything has an impact. Everything has an impact on the environment, and surviving itself means that, you know, like take any other species on Earth. If they could, they would just dominate and do exactly what we're doing, 
and probably do it in even less mindful and, a way. And they do within their own realms, right? Within like, their within, niches. Like, yeah, with, with, within what they think the world is, right. the universe is. Some of them... Very... Rabbits don't have, like, school classes yeah. where they tell each other, stop fucking because we have too many... We're overpopulated yeah. and we won't be able to feed our children. And, and maybe that's why aliens don't give a fuck about us because... We're like rabbits. Yeah, we're like rabbits to them. It's like, why would we care what what's going on on Earth? Well, like, one of the... That's not even in our dimension. Like, population is one of, like, the environmental like factors right because if we didn't have yeah. so many people we wouldn't have so many problems that's a, that's, um, a, that's i'm a, not saying we should have less people but it's just obviously a factor but but that's that's actually a great point too because that I, i've seen that especially in recent years get like become again it, it always seems to just become like politicized and it evolves into kind of just political bickering and somebody mentioned that yeah about, everything gets politicized it's like well, what some, the fuck somebody mentioned i saw on, online about how um um, the fact that the way things are structured now in terms of, you know, food supply and, and resource supply globally, there's just too many people, right? Like, if you want to be able to feed everybody on planet Earth who exists now and, you know, support them with, like, resources that you need to live in a modern society, there's really just not enough production right now. So it's like, you have to look at that and say, what is the solution to that? And if the solution is the fact that well, there should, like, we need to stop, we can't keep exponentially making people, then people come back and say, well, what are you saying? Like, we should, you know, kill all these right. people, or do, and it's like, well, no, but if you just look at statistically so po- how that breaks you know, down, the, the it, it famous, is an issue over population. I think Pope, something Malthus, M-A-L-T-H-U-S, I think, I thought he was a Pope. Yeah, but great guy. They they I, they even say, like, he was involved in, like, the early environmentalism idea, but with his famous quote which says don't bother don't bother feeding uh the poor because there'll be more of them tomorrow and it, it's it well, wasn't that's an, an age-old axiom right uh, teach a man to f- uh, fish no f- give a man a fish you feed him for a day teach a man to fish you feed him for life that's not the same at all <laughs> <laughs> the teach a man to fish feed a man a fish thing is saying like don't just am i just yelling too much i think you're yelling too much is saying don't just um which is scary because you're not really yelling. Don't just yeah, but my, okay, that's better. My point is, if you teach all the poor people how to fish, then fuck you. <laughs> that's where that analogy breaks. Well, down. the teaching the teaching someone to do something just means like, oh, they'll actually have the tools to like, you know, take care of themselves instead of always yeah. having to come to you for a fish. But yeah, but like, the, there's not even enough clean water in the world for everybody, is there? And the point is, like, population is growing at such a rate that as soon as you solve the problem for seven billion people, now there's nine. Well, and the, then you solve it for nine, yeah. and now there's eleven. And the problem too is that if you solve, you know, a, a, say a problem like different types of diseases, it's like great. That's what was killing so many people, especially people like you say who are maybe poorer. But that doesn't mean that all those other resources that people need to live and then, you know, thrive are still available to them. It's like you solved one issue that was keeping populations down, but now have you solved access to water, access to food, access to oil? And all these environmental problems often are trade-offs. So it's like yeah. w- like plastic, which I think we're going to do like a whole part two to this episode just oh, on we're plastic. Get into plastics, yeah. Joe likes to eat plastic at the beach, and it, it's kind it. of inspired mm-hmm. him. Um, but <laughs> We'll explain later. <laughs> <laughs> basically, Joe collects garbage and plastics at the beach. Yeah. And um, – I would say, you know, back in the 60s or something, like the way people were thinking about environmentalism and, and, and pollution, micro beads and microplastics and those things weren't like the center of the conversation. Yeah, they weren't even on the radar yet. Um, the EPA of... was only formed in, in 1970. I think it was 70. Yeah. 70. Yeah, it's not as old as probably people think. Um, so ideas about taking care of the environment go back like pretty far. I even wrote something in our little note thing. Oh, shit. I forgot to bring it up on the screen. Is oh, it's too, fine. It's I enjoy late. looking at myself, uh, how I look in a frog suit more than anything, I think. I mean, it is entertaining, at, at least for me. Want me to give a little hop? Yeah, can you give a hop? See, this is what you get, everybody, for not, not watching. <laughs> Don't you wish you were in the live stream now, people? Nobody's uh, watching. Well, our last live Instagram thing, everybody was like, ribbit, ribbit, we want to see Luke in a That's frog suit. That's true. How did that word spread so quickly? Dunk tankers, listeners get what they want, you know? Yeah, we, we treat them well. Uh, so anyways. What was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were talking about how unhoppy you are about the environment, the <laughs> oh. state of the environment. Um, <laughs> right. So one of the things that uh, 
and maybe I, we'll get into the plastic thing, but yeah, it almost seems like humans, as we're dealing with like pollution, right? What would yeah. you say is the first big historical event that caused humans to kind of wake up and be like, oh shit, like we got to do something? Ooh, that's a good question. In terms of pollu- like pollution or yeah. global warming or... Because like technically pollution, however you define that, like right yeah. now we define it as like the particulate matter in the yeah. air that fucks with shit. But I mean, I think in terms of the, the EPA, I, I've read that it was it was something about um, what, what was it? Uh, BP something or, or it was some sort of chemical. That... Oh, the, the um, from the 60s. It was the uh, yeah, that was killing... fertilizer. The uh, it was killing like bird eggs D-D... or something. DDT. DD. I don't remember what it was. I thought it was BP something, but BPH or something like that. But it was it was killing like bird eggs or something, right? Well, the, uh, fuck. I, oh, DDT. Yeah. It was DDT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was killing bird eggs, right? It was doing a lot of shit, and they, yeah. I think that like uh, Dow Chemical was like the. But it's like one of those things where it's it's not. Uh, you can just get rid of it or change to something else. Like it, it's one of those chemicals where it's like okay, maybe it's easy and cheap to make, but. Is that worth the environmental impact? Then in the nineties, it was the same thing with um, with ozone, uh, shit that was destroying the ozone layer. The hole in the ozone layer. I remember growing up through middle school, but yeah. I, the, the the one I was. But they, um, they they're they're on their way to fixing that now. It's going to take like another fifty. I years. I always thought like, what do guys go up there with like a big tall ladder and just like start patching <laughs> yeah. the layer of the but, ozone? But just banning the shit that was causing it, like the has aerosols, had an effect. They, well, it's going to take like like 50, 40, 50 more years, but it's already having an effect. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I was so like, I was hinting at the industrial revolution though, like oh. in the late eighteen hundreds. Well, that's where a, companies yeah. like because like maybe a combination of they didn't know any better slash they didn't give a fuck they didn't give a fuck, you know, just dumping waste products. Um, yeah, you heard about these trees getting covered in soot, you know, and people in in the throughout the eighteen hundreds, romanticism was also an artistic movement that focused so much on nature, mm. you know. Like when yeah. when I listen to Schubert song cycles or Mahler song cycles, like poetry, like um, Heinrich Heine, H I E N E, uh, yeah, okay, not like um, the Heine behind my butt flap in this frog suit, which does exist, people. If you're joining us now, you that, know that because when I put my frog suit on, if I have to take a dump, I don't <laughs> want to have to take it off. I'm I'm loving that the frog suit comes with a little zipper. That's frog amazing. suit. Somebody commented. <laughs> <laughs> See, cheers! I, I knew the frog suit would ribbit, be a good ribbit. idea. Ribbit, yeah, ribbit, ribbit. Hopefully, hashtag. you can hear us and we didn't fuck anything up. I'm, I'm gonna hashtag. Yeah, if you can hear us, give us a ribbit, ribbit. Um, we'll, we'll see if that works. So, like, when you read that kind of poetry, it's all, yeah. it's all focused on yeah, romanticism. Yeah, people turning to nature for guidance. Yeah, <clears throat> often this like wandering archetype where. A man has unrequited love in town and goes on a long journey and to find himself in nature. Chokes on the train exhaust. And yeah, and then like when you're at this like beautiful stream and you see like all the waste products of like the industrial yeah. revol- revolution. Yeah. And then you confront the businessman. You're like, you really shouldn't be doing this. And they're like, oh, go eat a dick. Like, yeah, I feel like good. I feel like the hashtag of the industrial revolution would have been like hashtag not my problem. Yeah, not my fucking problem, right? But it's funny because I think that. Um, have you read that book, The Sixth Sixth The uh, Sixth Extinction? Uh no. It's all about how basically humans are caught like there's been five mass extinctions throughout history. Okay. Like the meteor that killed the dinosaurs was one. Like, and each one kills almost everything, but not quite everything. Yeah, not quite everything. Yeah. Or it kills like at least half or something like that. I mean, like that, of right? all the species that have ever existed, ninety nine point nine 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 percent. Sure, but there's there's moments perished. of these mass extinctions, right? It's like yeah. Oh, between them of course like way more species go extinct but there's these specific moments where like a lot go extinct very quickly and we're now at the point since the industrial revolution where people are starting to categorize this as a sixth extinction event because so many species you know are are dying off i don't know the exact numbers but it's something interesting to look into because like right now like it's happening but it's not sudden right well so that's what i mean the ca- that's, that's ice the ages pro- in that kind of calculation yeah, sure. But that's the problem is that especially modern humans, like we're obsessed with apocalypses in like our culture and media, like zombie apocalypses, meteor apocalypses. It's all on TV and movies, but we're actually li- possibly living one right now. Well, how would you know? Well, because it's not sexy. It's not, you know, ooh, giant meteors, ooh, earthquakes, ooh, volcanoes. It's, it's, it might take 
two, three, four hundred years, right? Okay. But then if we get to a point where all of a sudden, oh, we're out of oil, we didn't plan for that. There's no more fresh water, we didn't plan for that. There's no, like, you know, the the sea levels are rising because all the ice is melting, we didn't plan for that. This is how, you know, uh, globalized empires collapse. There's a great lecture, I'm, I'll, I'll link in the description. Will you? <laughs> and, well, because I can actually go back and listen now. But it was this guy, he was talking about how in in western culture there's there's been so far two great collapses the, the one that everybody knows about is ancient rome the collapse of ancient rome but the other that uh, f- many fewer people and people always talk about the us as well, like as the th- approaching as that. the third one yeah as the third one and the the other one the older one um was the end of the bronze age and what's interesting about both of those collapses which to the people at the time they might consider to be like an apocalypse or just a total breakdown rather or they might just be like ah! Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, is that like they didn't happen overnight. They didn't like they're made. Of course. Ma- like you're taught in, and again, this is what I'm saying. We like, read history books as like every Rome hundred fell, years is yeah. like one thing. Well, or Rome fell like in, in 476 AD, and it's like, well, maybe the city, but there was an. Th- that's just for the people in that city, right? Like it was degrading long before that. And w- the example he gives with the Bronze Age is really interesting because you can consider that to be a globalized. Um, society he shows how you, you had like the egyptians you had um the babylonians you had um you know the the, the greeks you, you had all these cultures and they had uh, they were all in contact with each other within their realm they had a globalized economy they had trade routes and everything and once these pressures were put on them from all sides where they they got invaded by these uh people who they called the sea peoples from the west and the mediterranean there were natural disasters too. There was also drought and famine. There was like a dry period for a hundred years or something like that. A few things that they could just well, couldn't keep up with. Exactly. All of these factors eventually cut off one of the supply routes for uh, like tin or something that you use to make bronze. And once that fell, it became a domino effect and all these empires collapsed. So it, it wasn't necessarily like... Because they depend on each other to some extent exactly. as you, well. Exactly. You could point to one single causal factor in there and say, well, that was it. But it was set up by all of these other you know, factors that I were I guess like by. anything, that's the whole... Well, and look at us today. Like We're running out of oil. We're overpopulated. We're running out of other resources like clean water. However, I will say we're smarter than ever. And yeah, that's technology true. is a game changer. Specifically, maybe when all of these problems are confronting but our problems are game changers look at the human population throughout history where these other disasters happen and compare that to now and it's it's a population yeah. i was just re- reading about like, the formation of the epa earlier yeah and i just saw something about what the population of the world was in 1960 it was three billion yeah now it's like almost eight, eight billion that's so th- to your point that's an interesting point that technology is a game changer but the problems that we're dealing with are are in of themselves N- when you say unprecedented that doesn't that doesn't do it justice right because saying it's unprecedented might mean oh the population has like increased 50% like that's a lot more people it's like it's been like almost an asymptotal curve well um that's that that might be impossible so many to deal with even with that technology exponential type curve yeah there's some well, resource depletion is one of them. Population growth is one of them. Yeah, um, sure. And and um, if you look at the graph of how much plastic since it was invented in the early 1900s yeah. has been dumped into the oceans, like yeah. it's risen exponentially too. Like yeah. all these things are expon like the phrase exponential has kind of taken on like a popular meaning. Yeah. You know, like oh, uh, this orchestra is exponentially better than it was last year. It's like, uh, <laughs> is it or is it just a little do, better? And you're just using an adverb. I, I just mean like people use it in that kind of way. Yeah. Whereas I like exponentially you. literally means two becomes four becomes eight becomes mm-hmm. 64, you know, and, yeah. and all of a sudden you're like, you know, it's the famous example they used to describe exponential growth. I think maybe this was in economics that I saw it was um, you put one droplet of water on the pitcher's mound of a, a baseball stadium. Yeah. And then you look to see how much water you have after it doubles every, you know, second, right? Is my mic on? Yeah, you're good. Okay. I just keep looking. I didn't know what was happening before with, like, the, yeah. the squealy wheelies. You're recording? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, 
So like it 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 only takes like an hour or something like that. I forget the exact details of like every second it doubles until the whole stadium's filled up with water. Right, but towards so imagine, the end it probably becomes very quick. Well, that's the thing. Imagine you're slow, looking yeah. at water develop yeah. on the pitcher's mound, and everybody in the stadium's like, "Oh, we don't really have that much of a problem. No worries." Blah blah blah, and then the whole bottom part of the stadium is filled up with water and everybody's like, what's going on with that water thing? Should we yeah. do something about it? And it's like, yeah. no, nah, don't worry. Like we're all the way up here. Yeah. And then before you know how to do right. anything about right. it, you're drowning. Right. So that's my, my worry because I agree with you that technology is a game Metaphorically, changer. but also global warming wise, it could be literally like coastal cities. That's what I mean. If it's like, it could come to a point where it, it's too late in the sense of like, well, yeah, maybe we can like, stop global warming but if all these cities are underwater and again it disrupts the balance and and one domino starts to fall this is what's happened throughout history like with those other two examples where it was like once those dominoes started didn't matter like what well-intentioned or smart people did it was too late it wasn't enough the scary thing is also that i don't think we're worried about entities like the u.s government or russia or china or the big players in the world like non-existing right there's just going to be a big change in population and then maybe a lot of the things we hold dear like freedoms and things you know in this kind of martial law military future where 1984 that's what it's about i mean you know things change really quick when when the environment changes right there's a great article uh did i send it to you about how the syrian civil war that can all be traced back to um, desertification of their farmlands. I think you mentioned it. I didn't. It's fucked remember up, dude. It. I'll, I'll I'll link that in the description too. Oh wow, he's he's linking two things, but guys. Dude, it's it's fucked up because it's all about how in the like mid two thousands, all of a sudden, all this farmland they had like a really bad drought. You, you know, they're part. I think they're they're part of what would have been classically considered the Fertile Crescent. Yeah, the Tigris and, and Euphrates and River going right through Syria, but Baghdad that's, area. But that's like, that's all drying up. Iraq, and and yeah. after a lot of that farmland dried up, or as it dried up, they had an influx of people moving to the cities to look for work and to you know try to get like social services and shit. And they were like, we don't have that. Like, you were supposed to bring food. Like, there is not more here. Like, you were the guys who were supposed to bring it, and that's when shit started to break down there. And that's a scary potential microcosm example of global environmental degradation, especially with just ever-increasing population. Well, we like to think that humans are these, like, very decent creatures, and I think of all the well, creatures that Well, they are in, the, exist, in the right circumstances. That's what I mean. Yeah. Like, uh, we, we have the ability to be very, very decent and good-natured and kind and and all all of the kind of good things that that we value in like right stable life right yeah but the second you you get to you know the kind of future where your next meal is not guaranteed and that guy has it yeah you don't know what you're capable of i well, mean some people well that's been proven throughout history too. do know what they're capable of and i think the more you know what you're capable of the better yeah. in other words there are dark corners in your mind where there's like shadows of your former chimpanzee ancestors bashing an enemy chimpanzee with a rock until their head is flattened. I want those bananas. Yeah, give me back my bananas. Give me those bananas. I'm in a frog suit, so I won't impersonate a monkey, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, give me the fucking. What do frogs eat? Bugs? Flies? Give me your fucking. I always flies. bring up Walking Dead as an example of that. Like, well, that's what it's where about. Where you just yeah. see the personality changes and. Some people have a stronger sense of morality. In other words, Rick was someone who did the right thing for deep reasons, and it took him a long time before he he kind of broke down. And, well, and, he also did, and and then he gets to like kind of a, a, a um, like a middle ground where he does the right thing as much as he can. But he realizes, but, but he'll also, get screwed over. Also, by bite being, your fucking throat if you're going to rape his son. Yeah. Also, like, like no questions asked. He he went from like, um, which fair enough. If they right? stumbled upon outsiders that were like, please, we need help. Yeah. And and took advantage of his good nature. How many times did he get screwed over by that? Because they stole all their shit and killed one of their guys. There's a great whatever there's, there's it was. There's a great scene. Uh, and I'm spo- I might be spoiling this. But, Walking Dead spoiler alert. Honestly, the, if you're not caught up on that, like, but the what show are you doing? the show the show also sucks now. So like, only watch to like stopped watching it. Yeah, myself. only watch to like season seven. Like they they fucking botched that show after like season seven or eight, whatever. But there's a great scene where th- he meets these cannibals 
who are these types of people who they're pushed to this extreme limit and they just go for it. They're like, yeah, we're going to fucking capture people, lure them in and fucking eat them. Yeah, it's and, food. Yeah, it's food. Uninfected meat. Like it's nothing, it's nothing personal, but like, yeah, we got to do it. And he tells the guy when they're about to kill him, he says, he says, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill you with this like or I'm going to kill you with like this machete or something like that or like that machete that you have. And he's the guy's just like, that's hilarious because I'm about to kill you for food. And then, of course, shit goes wild and he winds up like eventually facing the guy. And Was that the strategically best thing is to like if you can kill the guy or not kill the guy, but don't warn him you're about to do it. Well, he he was just buying time, I think. I think so. Because yeah. in that situation, it's like, well, we're probably all going to die, but buy as much time as you can. But anyways, long story short, he winds up eventually reversing positions like over like a season. And then the guy's faced in the in the position where Rick's about to kill him. And the guy just goes because he shoots most of them and there's like three of them left and they surrender. And the guy goes like Rick gives a speech and the guy goes, you're not going to kill me like you would have shot me if you were going to kill me. And Rick just looks at him and shrugs and goes, didn't want to waste the bullets. Right. And he's like, and I promise he you. says it like this didn't want to waste the bullets like he says it like so unemotionally yeah he's just like yeah no why would i waste bullets like i have you in the position where you're totally screwed and then he he, of course murders him yeah um i think i think uh every everybody's different there are different personality types and different you know limits the thing that scares me about um people sometimes is Sometimes I meet people and I think, hmm, the only reason that you you seem to be being a good person is because you're worried you'll get in trouble if you did what you want. That is scary. And I, I've just met people where I kind of – it's more of like a an instinct, like something deeply evolved in my mind. With, like you can all experience this when you meet someone. Like if you just kind of pay attention to subtle things about – about facial expressions and energy and have, and you, have you read dune no you should really read dune do you want a copy sure yeah because there's this school uh, there I, th- I don't know how to pronounce it but um they're basically like people consider them to be witches but they've just been training for like thousands of years on how to read facial expressions oh, and shit. like voice vocal expressions and yeah. they they know if you're lying just by lo- like looking at you as you talk is that the one that the guy uh, beat the card game by not looking at the cards? No, that's a Philip K. Dick oh, book. Oh, right, This right, is uh, right. Frank Herbert. But yeah, you should read Dune because they're just like, basically they're just like, oh yeah, if we just train to figure this out over the next 10,000 yeah. years, we'll evolve to do it, essentially. And I think I think our brains do a lot of that subconsciously. Um, have you ever heard of these type of people called mentalists? Oh my God, in Dune they're called mentats. Oh, really? Yeah, you got to read Dune. So, like, if 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 we brought a mentalist in the room right now, and you didn't know that it was a thing that someone could do, yeah, mentalists are these people that train, and they must have some natural gift to begin with, probably. Yeah, but basically, they train at reading people's um, body language and facial yeah. expressions and all of these things that we give out way more information than we're aware of. Yeah, and we when never we're... we never train to look for that, right? Yeah. But I you mean, don't learn that shit in grade school. Parts of our our, our unconscious brain, I think, um, read those things and give us information about it. Yeah. In a way, but yeah, we don't we don't train to to be conscious and like actually notice those things. So, this guy, I'll, I'll uh, post a link to this. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're making a lot of posts. Well, like three so far. I'm trying to keep like mental track, but yeah, I already forgot the first two. I'm not um, gonna lie. Oh, yeah. Syria, right. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's he he can basically it appears like he's a magician, and the whole reason yeah. he does it is to say I am not using um, magic. I'm not claiming to be magic. Right, right. I'm just very good at reading, reading people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 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 that's a very fine tuned skill in that sense, right? Yeah. So speaking of that, like I, that came up because I was saying there are some people that if an apocalypse type event happened, they would be in their optimal environment yeah in other words i think a lot of people like i would say us have the personality types and evolved to exist in a very stable peaceful right world where there are um rules and following those rules for good reasons are rewarded yeah and there are people that thrive better right more alpha type 
people, right? And yeah. that alpha energy, right? The same alpha energy that makes a wolf become leader of a wolf pack. Right. That can get you to the top of um, a corporation, like a CEO. Right, right. Can get you to climb the law firm that you're working at. But if you're now in Walking Dead type yeah. world, it will get you to be, uh, who's the fucking? Uh, um, Negan. Negan. Yeah. That guy's terrifying. Well, Negan's whole thing is like, I guess I'll start smashing heads. Right. And, and people were like, hey, uh, let's go with the guy who's smashing heads because I don't want my head smashed. And I thought deeply about like what made Negan work, what made him so powerful. He's so much more interesting in the comics, too. I bet. I mean. Because in the comics, he, he comes to like regret everything he's done. Like he spends so oh, interesting. Yeah, he spends so much time later in the regrets hard to feel, though. A lot of people just bury it deep. Well, and they so pretend they don't feel it. I, I don't want to spoil it for you, but you should read the, the comics are way better than the show. Do you have them? Yeah, they're on YouTube. Oh, oh shit! Enough. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> YouTube, don't take them off. I know. Well, I know how to find them. There's a secret trick. I'll tell you. Um, so I, I just wanted to talk about the politics of. Um, yeah, we got dark there. Of conservation and environmentalism, because yeah. I've heard this point before. It's not like it's original to me, but when well, you think about the word conservation. And then yeah. the sort of political ideology of a conservative, yeah. you would think a conservative would would be someone who really cares about conservation yeah. of of anything, right? They're yeah. conserving stability. They're they're wanting to keep things the way they are and not have things drastically change. Which they're doing for their corporations. So you, it's just like their their conserving principles are just being applied to elsewhere, and yeah. it, it also you you hinted at this earlier, but it's this idea that why does everything have to be politicized? Because the second something gets dragged into the political arena, yeah, all of a sudden the thinking becomes so muddy, and you see people believing shitty things for shitty reasons. Yeah, they're they're not aware of their logical you know disconnects and yeah. And it's just because it got placed in this category that we call politics. And so much of that I found, like, and I blame the left and the right equally because I meet people on the left. And you know what? This identity, polix, identity politics idea would be that if I tell you I'm on the left, then we can go down the checklist mm -hmm. of different political ideas and you could tell me which – opinion i might have right which yeah. means i'm not an individual i'm someone who's just on a team yeah and so we that's, all know that's that why i don't have a political affiliation i refuse yeah and people are shocked by that especially my democrat friends they're like what do you mean you're not a democrat and i'm like why would i well, be Well, one of the things i dislike about democrats and then they get really mad and people on the left is and i don't know as many people on the right but i've been actively trying to watch more conservative media and consume more content so i can just yeah. understand things better I grew up very left leaning and only in having access to left leaning. Well, are things. you are you registered as a Democrat? I think I still am. I I don't know if I changed it. I yeah. I was during the 2016 election, like I oh, voted for Bernie. Oh, you you could, yeah. Um, I could, which means I must have still been registered as a Democrat. Right. Yeah, that checks out. Even though when I I moved and registered to vote, like I didn't think to myself, I'm proudly a Democrat. I just thought this seems strategic because yeah. I want to have a say in the, in sure, the primaries. Yeah. yeah. But, Which you is know, a good reason. It's probably a better reason than most. We would attack a conservative who's saying, I don't think global warming is real, and say you're anti-science, right? Yeah. But then for the people on the left, it's not like they've gone and, and did the work to understand the science. They just, you know, say, like, in other words, if you pry their opinions, if you yeah. claw at them and try to figure out, you know exactly why they believe what they believe it's actually supported by just as little real information well, in their head so they've yeah. made just as many assumptions yeah. and and they have just as many gaps of knowledge well, and they're just relying on oh well i've just been told that this is science yeah well part of the problem too i so from my standpoint it's sort of an it, the the issue is sort of the fact that i'm pretty stupid like I'm, I don't think. No, I'm, you're you're smart enough to know how stupid you are. Well, so maybe that's true. But here's <laughs> here's the thing. I've actually read. That's a compliment. Oh God, that's where we're at. Um, I've actually read the like some of the data, like a lot of the data, because I, I'll have students who write about global warming and climate change, and I'll look at the sources and I'll read the data. So I know it's true. 
but I can't tell you one specific study. Like, I can't tell you. Well, oh, that's okay. Look like, I'm not saying here. that you have to walk around through the world and be able to cite but, but, every scientific but I mean, study but I mean, like on the drop of a hat. Devil's advocate, if a conservative tells me name a study, I'd be like, I don't know. I'd have to go online and, and find one. It doesn't mean that they. I know for a fact that it's true. Like, I can show you the evidence and the data that shows that this is true. I would just need to find it first. Fair enough. Although I remember when I was a bit younger, when I was in my undergrad. I think this was still an undergrad, but I hung out with a lot of older people because I was like 19, 20. You're and going these... with the, the older swinger crowd. Eh? <laughs> nice. No, I'm talking like these guys were like nice. 25, 26, you nice. know, because I, I was playing with and hanging out with a lot of doctoral students. Yeah. It ended up being like a great part of where I got my undergrad yeah. that I was around more mature and older like uh, musicians. Yeah. So, um, I remember I was like going on about some kind of like science thing, something about space, like some kind of discovery that was that had happened yeah. recently. And the person just decided to do this little game, like this devil's advocate game where he's like, well, how do you know that? And and then I had to go to the next layer of like, yeah. well, because light takes time to track whatever the thing was. Yeah. And then, well, how do you know that? And eventually it, it came down to me saying, well, I have not myself. Have you? Sifted through the data yourself, poured through these numbers. Yeah, so and say. it got to the it, it gets to this point where yeah. I'm like, we we don't know so much. In other words, your experience of being a human, if you even assume that your eyesight is real, maybe that's fake. Yeah, maybe the right. whole thing's you right. know in a simulation. But let's assume that your eyesight is real. You're this tiny data collector, and you're mostly going through the world and barely collecting any information. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, I hear that. So, like, I was driving back from Massachusetts today, right? Yeah. And I was listening to a few few different podcasts, and I, I started thinking to myself, at some point, like, it was, like, three hours in. It ended up taking five hours. It was miserable, traffic-wise. Oh. Um, Did you take the ferry? I was I was passing by Bridgeport, and my instinct told me to take the ferry, and then yeah, I was, like, 60 bucks, you. not worth yeah. it. And then oh, yeah. in New York City traffic, I was, like, I fucked up. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was a Friday, you know? Yeah. Um. So at some point I got my brain got kind of tired from the podcast that yeah. I was listening to and I hit pause on it and then this is the thought that started getting into my mind. I was like I have no idea what's going on in most of the world and like I'm taking in like little bits of data as I'm driving. One yeah. of the things that's trippy about driving is you're going 60 70 oh God, miles per yeah, hour. We talked about this the other like day. And like your memory of a road trip, yeah. you're like I don't remember going into Connecticut. Yeah. And it's like, wait, no, you spent like an hour and a half yeah. in Connecticut. What do you mean you yeah. don't remember Connecticut? Yeah, I got the gist of it <laughs> yeah. while it was happening. Because like so much of the data just go, so to speak, goes in one eye out the other eye, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Um, we, we were talking on the porch the other night how like your eye has like like very high resolution in the center and then like at, at the peripherals, it's like very low resolution. I, I like how you say the porch like anybody knows what that means. A porch. <laughs> um basically we were going to podcast on monday night was it monday ah, what day is it now someday no yeah <laughs> it, it was, was monday it was someday it was monday yeah. um and we ended up just like basically doing a podcast but without hitting record yeah. on uh on joe's porch um so i i get this yeah. one i guess to, like a zoomed out point is i hate the idea that things become political because as soon as they yeah. become political it's like they put the, they get flagged and they become yeah. infinitely harder yeah. to talk about to have a straight yeah. conversation. So if I'm talking to somebody who I politically disagree with, yeah, we could be talking about you're, how to you're make. You're already a, going in like, you know, <laughs> pounding against. And sometimes each other. it's going great until the politics yeah, comes up. Right. I so like that. I'm talking about a paella recipe and we're having a great time, and then something comes up about like political correctness on campus, and I like say something, and they're like, "Well, that sounds problematic." And I'm like. Why'd you just use that word? Like, yeah. and then you figure out like, oh man, like we, we not only have a lot that we could fight about, but mostly there's so much that we misunderstand about each other Yeah, that it would actually take three hours. It of would take a while. Yeah. Very patiently sitting down and working through Yeah, what have you watched and seen and what data have you collected to lead to your opinions? Yeah. Cause I clearly have, watched and seen and collected data well, that led me and, to a different thing. And most thing. people aren't willing to do that, right? Well, it takes a lot of maturity. It takes a lot yeah. of patience. I'm not saying I, I – the only thing I would say I'm good at is 
I can mindfully kind of notice when my brain is about to go into a fighting mode now. Yeah. And I just go, easy, big fella. And yeah. I back myself down. Yeah. Well, you know, in terms of maturity and patience, you are in a frog suit. So. <laughs> <laughs> So covered in beer, frog suit covered in beer. I had a um, one to your point though. I had I feel like I say that a lot to your point, and it means nothing. But it means as a as a reflection to your point. It, it means I had to say something. To the other thing you say point. a lot is funny. You said that. Say that. F- funny you said. Funny you say that. Actually, um, <laughs> I had uh, and it was like eco one hundred and one, like introduction to ecology, and the first class. The professor basically spent the whole time just explaining the fact that, look, I'm not telling you what to do about pollution, climate change, global warming, any of that. I'm just here to show you the data and the evidence and draw conclusions from that. And then what you choose to do with that information is up to you. And he would then, and then the rest of the semester. That's a healthy way to do it. And it turns out, well, what I liked about that is clearly his point was like, pollution and global warming is a huge fucking issue and we need to do something about it. But his whole point was, here's the data. I'm just going to show you the raw data and see whatever conclusions you come to. And by doing that work in depth and well, oh, look at that. It happens that you probably oftentimes come to the similar conclusions that he has maybe about what we should do about it and especially if you go in with a healthy openness to falling on either side well how how else you draw people in right who who maybe don't agree with exactly the opposite of that it says hey well he started by non-politicizing it which i thought was brilliant and that's the same so how do you non-politicize something then well he just he just shows you the evidence and he shows no, no, I don't data. mean like on a local scale like that. I mean, take any issue. There are certain issues I'm trying to think off the top of my head. What's an issue that used to just be mainstream knowledge that has become politicized? Um, and I, the one that just popped into my head happens to be one where I think— This isn't going to be good. When I was a bit younger, I used to think— The left of politics was the party that stood with science and used science and respected science, and those damn right-wingers don't understand science, blah, blah, blah. And there's still a lot of people on the right. Specifically, I remember hearing some of the things this um, conservative woman that gained popularity because Kanye West tweeted about her, Candace Owens. Can we get Kanye West to tweet about us? That'd be nice. Um, Yeah. She's a, a black conservative it. woman, and like one of the reasons that I think she um, has climbed in popularity is is the left and the the tactics that they usually use to discredit people and like you know get rid of them, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, they can't really use those tactics on a black woman, right? So I'm not saying anything. <laughs> so um, I mean, you're you're green. So I you was can say whatever when you she want. was first coming onto the scene and like. Because she got popularity from Kanye. Was she, was she, on, was she the one on Joe Rogan? Yes, and, yeah. and and that's so I'm getting to that. Oh yeah, that was the one I had to stop. Watching. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I I turned her off. I was driving back from Richmond, yeah, Virginia, another great beer city. Yeah. Um, and you know, I I downloaded this episode because I thought, you know what, like, I I am intrigued by the the sort of mismatched identity of yeah. like and joe rogan handled it pretty well i thought well let's just explain explain what happened like oh i mean from what i saw basically he he was like he was trying to be like all right let's get to a point of something we can agree upon and she was just like well no, we didn't I... even say the premise which was she they were talking about a lot of things and then the topic of global warming yeah, came up right. and she just flat out denied global warming and he kept trying to bring up the fact that that oh there is science in fact it's pretty conclusive and it's pretty comprehensive as far as i remember it took about 10 minutes for her to even concede that global warming is just a fact right well that was his point he kept trying to say like i'm not trying to make a political statement i'm just trying to explain that like well he had a few points but the first one was layer was can we agree that global temperatures on average are rising Right. Which is just a data point, right? Well, that's just it's, that's just factual. And then the, the Forget second about part pollution. is, yeah. can we right. agree that humans, to yeah. the exact degree that humans are responsible for global warming, yeah. we don't know, but but they are they opinions are, range yeah. from like you know a little bit to a lot, and yeah. most opinions say that we are the primary driver of 
right, of global right. warming as we're seeing it right now. Right. Um, one of the the factors that people don't uh, talk about, or, or or I don't hear people talking about a lot, certainly not in mainstream circles, is not just CO two in the in the atmosphere, but that the oceans actually absorb co2 and, oh and lead to what's called ocean acidification so much to say and about it, the oceans and it, it fucks with so much like i mean yeah. there's just too much like I, I and i i'm not even um well versed enough to like go into a whole spiel on acidification of the oceans but yeah. my main point being like i just saw that she ha- and and she at least admitted that this is not the hill she wants to die on i think that's the phrase she yeah. used Oh, did and, she really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because he he's a very competent interviewer. Yeah, like I think yeah. one of the things that Joe Rogan's great at is he's like a vacuum that can suck out whatever. Yeah, faults the person has, I, but I, not I, in I a, agree with that, a yeah. negative way. In a very just like no, it's not vindictive or like trying to get you or yeah, gotcha. It's actually at all. in yeah. the most friendly way you can imagine, yeah. and that's yeah. why it works. People, yeah, if, I feel like be in you, fight mode against. Yeah, I feel him. like if you go on that podcast and you have a bad experience, you you done fucked up. It's probably your fault. Yeah, yeah, it's probably definitely your fault. And he's done and said a lot of things that have ruined other people's careers. But because one, because he's a comedian right. and doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, he. Does and not two, give because fuck. he's a kind yeah. person, you know. Yeah. Who just has like some reasonable opinions, and yeah. he's mostly left leaning. That that. Yeah. It really works for him in that in that yeah. way, and he's also a very flexible person. He's changed his mind a sure, lot. Yeah. He used to not believe that we went to the moon, and now yeah. he realizes that's like a silly conspiracy theory. He just got caught up in it. Well, I know? mean, I mean, because he's been brainwashed by by you know all the people who want you to think that, but. Do you know what the real problem is? The real problem is that hurricanes. I was gonna say is hurricane next because I drank way too much coffee and I have to go pee. Oh shit! But I will bring back more beer. So I'm gonna let you riff. For Which a beer? What do you want? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the two other beers we haven't had. Fair enough. And folks, yeah. um, Johnny might be joining us. Is uh, join this episode? Well, not this episode. Probably I'll, I'll check the when he's gonna be back, but. The plan is this is going to be part one of uh, some kind of pollution environment kind of episode, and then Johnny will be able to join us for part two. Um, so I had this idea when I was thinking about like things becoming political in this kind of way. People just all of a sudden stop thinking clearly. And then I had this idea of like, I understand that we we have to sort of be careful about what we do with the environment and how we um, keep an eye on just our consumption and plastics and but there's also something kind of negative because we're told so often about how we're destroying the world, how everything we do from driving our cars to the everything you buy is in some kind of plastic packaging that just gets thrown away. And and it's very easy to, to get caught in the feeling that everything you can think to yourself, basically everything I'm doing is just adding to the negativity of the world. Even the positive things you try to do, you probably had to like drive somewhere to go do that thing. Or you, you know, bought someone a gift, but that gift comes in like plastic wrapping or well, everything seems to be tainted by this negative thing. And then on top of that, you think to yourself, okay, well, what if I singularly started, like, trying to help out by, like, you know, uh, buying less plastic, What you know, getting toothpaste that doesn't have microplastics in it? Or what if I bought – what if I saved up a little bit more money and bought a Prius instead of, you know, a Ford Focus or, you know, something that gets really good mileage? Or what if I didn't even buy a car and only took public transportation? And then you also think like, well, what kind of an effect would that have? Like that would that really change much because there's billions of other people not giving a shit about that. So I think it's very easy to become nihilistic about it and just think, well, fuck it. Why should I care? Like, why should I do anything? The little bit I'm going to do is not going to have any effect in the world. Like, so whatever, I'm not going to do anything. Who the fuck are you talking to? (laughs) It's just funny to like come back into the studio and you're just rambling to yourself. No, no, I'm talking to Frank. Oh, how is he's he? He's my frog friend. I was just talking about like um, the nihilism idea that when you learn about how much we're fucking with the environment, it's very yeah. easy to become like nihilistic about it. Well, what can I do about it? I still need my sandwich, and now I sound like Patrick Starr. 
<laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. I don't know, SpongeBob. SpongeBob, why don't you clean the environment? Also, I think the tape on your on the camera is like very slowly falling down. No, what See are you talking I'm about? Our, our professional rig is is standing up to the highest of, of um, standards. So, Joe, I was thinking about this idea. I mean, we've talked about this a few times of tragedy of the commons, and maybe we can close What's on this that? point and then aim yeah. for part two we on could plastics. Do that. Yeah, but sure. um, can you explain tragedy of the commons? So, if if a guy has a bunch of sheep, right? Is that how the story goes? If they have a bunch of sheep, I mean, ex- explain it however you want, <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I I started a rant about just sort of like how learning about how much we're destroying everything yeah. is so easy to fall on the side of like, well, fuck it. Why should I do anything? It's not going right. to make a difference. Yeah. So tragedy of the commons very simply is this idea that um, say you have a field of sheep. I don't know why I keep coming back to the sheep, but you have a field of sheep. Right. And if you have a bunch of farmers and everybody takes just one sheep, that's enough to replenish the sheep population so that we never run out of sheep. But if one of the farmers realizes, hey, as long as everybody else only takes one sheep, I could take two and just wind up being pretty rich. And if nobody notices, I'm good to go. But if everybody does that or enough people do it where it winds up all of a sudden that there's no sheep left, then everybody's fucked. And you can apply that to any idea or, or any resource, right? Or yeah. any shared resource. So, Or any shared responsibility. Responsibility over resources. So if you think about the ocean, for example— I mean, I, I we'll talk more about this in the next episode on beach cleaning, but you see it all the time where shit people just throw out into the ocean or on the beach or in rivers that winds up on the beach. It's it's mostly shit where people clearly thought to themselves, or they didn't think. They just said, eh, "Fuck it, not my problem." So, so those kind of people, I I can't even empathize with. That level of, I don't know, is it laziness? Well, which is worse, the people who don't think about it or the people who think, eh, what's the difference? Because there are definitely a lot of people who don't even think about it. They just toss whatever and, and that, without, a, without, without a thought, which least, is worse. So um, on one of these moments in my five-hour drive today where I – so uh, when, I'm, when I'm driving a long car trip, I usually have a podcast going yeah, or I'll have music going yeah. or – I'll do like 20 minutes of silence and just kind of let thoughts come and go. And yeah. and, and one of the thoughts that came and went, cause I was, I knew we were going to do something on, on pollution. And I thought to myself, if I were at the beach and I had like some kind of big picnic kind of thing, almost definitely when I was done, there would be this like, priority from within to just like quickly clean up especially before like wind blew my garbage everywhere so now would you feel the same way 10 years ago when you were a teenager yes and i'll and and the, the this is why i had this thought it was that the level of me not leaving trash on the beach is not even yeah. just a logical level of like well if i do this then this will happen it's just like at the same way you don't want to eat poop like there's just yeah. like an instinct that's like oh that's not food right like right. i'm like that's not good yeah. You know, right and wrong come from deep things and the deeper down in like your development that you learn this, like my parents were very good yeah. teachers of like these basic things like you don't litter. Yeah. Like I well, remember well, growing I up mean, when that my should mom be something taught taught like either by by parents or like in school it's like or you, both. Yeah, you need you, both. There, there's no there's, as far as I know like we didn't take a fucking civics class which told us like why not to litter. Right. But just think of littering like I remember um so today I was driving and some <coughs> some fat, ugly woman cut me off in like a really just kind of like, oh, go fuck yourself kind of way, smoking a cigarette. And guess what she did with the cigarette when she was halfway uh, done with it? Threw it right out the window. Dude, there's nothing more infuriating to me than, than people driving smoking cigarettes. It's just so can I Because t- you know they're going to flick them. Can I tell you what's worse? Oh, I, I once saw somebody throw out their actual garbage from their car window. Just toss it on the side of the road? Yeah, like fast food wrappers and like a fry so container. So did I tell you about— Just threw it out the window onto the side of the road and kept Did driving. I tell you about the KFC massacre I found the other day? Massacre? So you'll have to listen to episode two on— oh, shit. Part two on beach cleaning to find out more. <laughs> so, Who am I winking at? Uh, <laughs> There's uh, like two cameras. As going. a transition into what we're going to talk about yeah. in this next part— which yeah. is like plastics. Yeah. I, I Plastic was, um, pollution, yeah. 
reading that like in 17 something oh uh, ben, ben franklin the ben franklin thing yeah. how he was like um you know petitioning to um you know make regulations for these businesses outside of philadelphia that were just yeah. dumping their waste yeah because they don't give a fuck it's and, philly baby and their argument back was like very similar to the kinds of arguments you hear back from like many businesses sure yeah which was like what about our rights we can do whatever we want we're free people and so yeah these are ideas that had to be established. The idea that, like, no, the public as an entity yeah. has a right to land, has a right yeah. to a, a, a decency of living. Like, well, sh and, and national and that parks share, that had shared to be a, responsibility, right? The share of responsibility. Yeah. Like, when you go to a campground, those well, like, kind of rules of like, well, that's leave it the way up, you found it. That's what's fucked up. The, the 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 idea that on a political level or a politicized level, that's like a leftist stance. It's Which like, is why is it? Why what the is, fuck? Okay, in, in my estimation, we have good and bad is one like moral and immoral is one dimension, and that's not the same as left and right. No, but it, it shouldn't. If be. you're a hard left lefty or a hard righty, and this might be a good indication if you're listening to this and you're thinking, no, I'm a lefty because I'm correct about things. It's like if you think because you're a lefty, you're more moral. Yeah. It's like you might on certain specific beliefs you have you might be more moral because of those that doesn't specific apply beliefs. to the rest of the spectrum yeah yeah and 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 there's no guarantee that like yeah the, the the left right thing is like it it wanders to and fro it generally has these ideas of like people on the more yeah. right-leaning side of politics tend to have like you know they value categories and structure and like hierarchies and people on the left yeah. tend to value openness and things like that yeah I'm. I tend to be more of an open person who's like, yeah, like, oh, you're weird in that way. I I find that cool. You yeah. know, I find like new. Yeah. I like traveling because like I see like. Yeah. New new ways people do things yeah. like. Well, that that's what's interesting about political affiliation, at least from my standpoint, because you take something like environmentalism, right? And somebody who's who's on the hard right or on the right, it's like they they may argue that like I I've heard this argument. I've I've gotten into this debate with people that. Well, the market will f will solve it. The market will figure it out. And to me, that's such a that's such a like a low level thinking argument when you think about like global impacts, right? And and collective global waste. That I mean, it is true sometimes with some things. But but this can be a huge gamble, right? This can be a huge. Well, so people say the market will figure it out with global warming. I'm not. I haven't been convinced by that argument. I haven't been convinced now, by that argument. I either. understand this argument, which is I understand be that. Be careful argument. about about any kind of government bureaucracy trying to solve a problem because they often, even if they go in with good intentions, out the other side. Well, so so here's it make it worse in so, some so here's unpredictable and, way. And to me, the question is like, which is worse, right? Government bureaucracy as a general idea it's like it, it, it often costs more than obviously somebody who isn't part of a bureaucracy could do it but unless they're willing to step in and do it nobody might be willing to do it and there's examples of this there's plenty of examples of where you need the public interest which is theoretically yeah. what the government represents you or what need it should that. yeah and you find this on the frontier of science it's like well yeah nasa is a good example nasa is right? a great example yeah. of like you know, a government is something that's willing to spend money on the frontier of science, even though there's no guarantee in payback. Yeah. Whereas a business like SpaceX can only be a business because space travel's already been figured out to yeah. a level where, sure, but it fails is, sometimes. But this they is why blow clearly up, you but... need. This is why, and this is what frustrates me so much about the left-right dichotomy and just like headbutting is the fact that NASA and SpaceX are a perfect example. What SpaceX does, they do way better than NASA ever could. And that's fine. And and what, it's great that SpaceX can exist in our what, country. And what NASA does well is far. They, they do better than a private entity could do. But what well, Na a private entity couldn't do it. Who's going to invest? Exactly. In that? But what NASA is also trying to do because they're also trying to compete with like SpaceX in some senses of trying to make a manned. Well, I mean, they pay SpaceX. They use them. You yeah, know? but but they're also trying to build their own shit, and like they should not be doing that. It's just a waste. It's 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 a jobs pro project. That's a whole other episode, though. Yeah, it's a whole. I mean, other I'm episode. not saying that like just because NASA in concept is good doesn't mean there's not ways that they might waste money, right? No, there's ways that they could be way more efficient, but they're vital to they're still vital and also at the same even though they don't do everything well or perfect or ideal they're still vital and at the same time they're like half a penny 
on the tax dollar. Oh, yeah, don't which even... means like of of one hundred percent of <sighs> our spending, they're one, half of one. That's got that's got to be next episode. <laughs> I mean, even anything with like yeah. environment and you know, I have to be honest. Like, we could have done a whole episode on like the whole Trump administration EPA. And well, that's a huge part of it. On so a much of level, like yeah. the the politics surrounding like Trump, especially when it's concerned with with science, like which you know, Luke, I, you cut two regulations for every new one. It's just it was that's a fact, Luke. It's it it's makes weird. Sense. I know for a lot of people, like Trump getting elected, kind of engaged them in politics more. Yeah, and for me, it sort of made me take a step back and just say, like, I'm so disinterested in the level of conversations that are going on with politics. But aren't you interested in trying to engage more on a level that is I'm trying meaningful? to speak I'm I trying am. to speak on a more zoomed out level. Yeah, that's in what other I mean, words, I, I don't have the energy to get into the details. Let's say the details are like in this sphere. There's a sphere back where you can talk about like what does it mean to be a conservative? Yeah. What does it mean to be a liberal? Yeah. And kind of talk about that di- dichotomy. Without getting lost in the weeds of like, yeah. uh, a d- what do you think about gender pronouns? What do you think about like this? What do you think about this? What do you think of? And yeah. all there's so much noise there. It's impossible to like yeah. figure out what's going on. And well, it's like and, global and, warming. It's like that should be easy. We all have to live on this earth, and we can't even agree on what reality is there. Well, that should be that should be the primary. The, the fact that g- global climate change isn't the focus or isn't the main or sort of is not a uniting thing. Oh my god. Sadly, what's one what's one way like think of the most obvious way that you can get all Americans to unite behind each other? War. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and and a lot of money is spent on that. A lot more money than when on 9/11 conservation. When 9/11 happened, there was a sense of unity, unity yeah. and togetherness and probably probably of which I have not seen elsewhere it was palpable. in my lifetime. Yeah. I was young. I was in 6th grade. Yeah. And it was palpable. I could feel yeah. A certain energy that well, that was that was an issue where it didn't matter if you were a Democrat, it didn't matter if you were a Republican, everybody was on the same fucking page, right? Yeah, yeah. So to your point, global climate change, like I, I think it's, and I, again, I come back to what that professor said, which was, here are the facts. I'm gonna let you come to the conclusions of what we should do about it, but you should know the information. And I think that's huge if you can relate that information. So maybe that's something we should include in the description. Actual fucking factual studies that show that, yes, the climate is changing, number one. Let's start there. Let's agree on that. Two, humans are impacting it to some degree. An unknown degree, but to some degree, some degree. And, and probably a high degree. And then but that, that we can Admittedly debate. unknown. Yeah. yeah. And even well, if we could admit that, we could admit that, like, hey, like, like in other words— it's so interesting when you're having a disagreement with somebody, you want to say, where is our disagreement? In other words, do you disagree that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas? Yeah. Do you disagree with science in general? Like Candace Owens on that this Joe Rogan podcast where she was arguing about global warming, yeah. you know what really turned me off, which is why I haven't followed her since? What? In this world, there are so many people to follow and so many ways to follow them. Yeah. And the kind of people that I have kept with over a long period of time are the people that have established a trust with me. Yeah. And the people that, that. don't establish a trust are people that can't say the phrase, I don't know. Mm. And what she should have said is, I actually don't have an opinion on this. But what she did say was, I don't really have an opinion on this, but I think it's not real. It's like, you're saying you have an opinion on it then. Yeah. And so, or or like, what's, I just what's lost... worse than that is that they, they'll say – because I've seen this too. I don't know in her case, but certainly in other cases where they say, I just feel that. And then they give their explanation, and then they defend it as if it's fact. And it's like right. you just said you feel, which means you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Right, right, right. And that's what that's what really bothers me in those types of arguments. It kind of depressed me with and her not, because – Not I... that you can feel what you want, but you can't then defend it like it's fact. Yeah. I mean, I feel a lot of things, right? Yeah. I wake up some mornings, I feel cranky. It doesn't mean yeah. much. It's just I a feel feeling. Like my, my butt itches, so I scratch it. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. If I I'm in my frog it. suit and I have to take a big runny dump, you yeah. know, I just do it. Um, so the thing that depressed me about her was when she first entered the scene, I thought it could be like a hopeful balancing act where, like, a reasonable conservative who's a woman who's black could, like, like kind of jar the system a little bit yeah it breaks and some ground in some ways unfortunately sure. my 
I, I think she's not a bad person, right? Like, I hate the idea of ad hominem attacks. Like, yeah, I, I, I just I don't think, like, like to qualify people as she good or revealed. Bad in that sense. She yeah. revealed to me that that her thinking isn't as thorough and complex yeah. as I thought it was. Now we all have weak spots and blind spots, but yeah. one of the things that I try to do is if you're asking me a question about something I don't really know much, yeah, which includes global warming, right? Like if yeah. you started grilling me about global warming, I would get to a point where I would plant a flag and say, I actually don't know more than this. Yeah, I know why I think I know more than this because I've been told a lot of yeah. things and it sounds like it could be true. Yeah. But like you said, have you gone through the data? Yeah. Have you checked how that data is collected and why it's considered good data yeah. versus bad data? Like, yeah. do you know the processes that they if process it, if, it if with? It's, and... if, it's, if it's any consolation, I have done that and it is good data. And the people who are smart, like what's scary is that they're, the people who argue with you who get you to that point – They'll start saying all this shit about other studies. They'll start citing them. They're smart enough to know what studies contradict that data. Yeah. Doesn't mean that they're right. Right. It's the same with GMO. Like, people will cite, like, sure. oh, this yeah. one study showed another, rats get uh, cancer. It's like, yeah, because— Another great example. They got yeah. can Like, that's one yeah. study, but what about the other hundred, you know? Yeah, or, like, are you looking at one factor within that study, right? Yeah. yeah. Or if you watch CNN yeah. or Fox or whatever your— yeah. News digestion. You see, like a three-minute segment. Does that mean you know anything? You should probably be listening to us for your news. Yes. I Thank think, you, Joe. I think that's the important closing note here. Um, we, now that I'm off camera. Oh yeah, the the camera's sinking. <laughs> do you want to do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, for, sure. For I would say. Um, one? Uh, so, th this kind of took more of like the. I just find it fascinating how things get a political spin to yeah. them, and and how things. If you really want to talk about them and have real conversations, they shouldn't be political. And I also love the idea that um, this might turn into a whole episode. I, I, I think I might order a book, and I'll let you know if I, if I can turn it into an episode concept, so to speak. But it's the idea that we shouldn't really have an opinion on almost anything, most people, mm -hmm. including us. I mean, because yeah. – you know there are very limited domains that you are actually an expert in. Yeah. Well, and other than that, you're 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 a blind person feeling around in the dark. Well, I think you should be allowed to have an opinion on things, but you shouldn't be married to those opinions, right? But you should also know that, like, like in other words, like I was just trying to say that even though I would consider my opinion about climate change to be pretty strong, if I were being attacked by an extremely competent person who was just trying to play devil's advocate and was very good at it. I could be shown that I have just as much faith in my opinion because it's not like I spent years, you know, I'm up here with my confidence yeah. level, but I didn't build the structure all but, the way but down let me ask you, with data but, but and let me experience. Ask you this and, this just very briefly. Have you looked at climate change data from like the national, like, you know, whatever, like the uh, NOAA or something like that? I mean, roughly, yes, right? All right, so do you trust what they where, say? Where is most of the strength of my opinion coming from is the people I've learned to trust who do more work in that area. And you, But you trust them for what reasons? Uh, some of them are personal reasons, meaning the very thing I was trying to say before, which is that you get a read on how somebody delivers information. Yeah. So, for example, this is the problem I have. I mean, I don't want to say just with the left, but I see so many people on the left when they're yeah. saying a quote-unquote – opinion they almost seem to to be performing a virtue signaling character yeah. and that's a game that's a deal breaker for me because i think to myself yeah. you might be right but if i'm going to check up on you it's going to take me three hours yeah, and i don't have I, that time I don't, right now. i don't have the time to come so back i'm just right going to turn yeah. you off and yeah. i'm going to keep that category in my mind as an unknown yeah it's like i would love that's to fair. be confident about what you were talking about yeah. But I can't use what you told me. Yeah. Whereas if Neil deGrasse Tyson's talking about, right, like, right, 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 you know, some kind of like yeah. lake on Mars, one, I have no reason to believe that he would be misrepresenting the data. Yeah. Two, every thing I've heard from him, I've detected, you know, maybe a bias here or there about certain things. Like yeah. people have called him out for having some bias against like the philosophy, but that's a whole other <laughs> thing. In other words, like everybody has their biases, but like yeah. if he's talking about like the lake he, on mars he's probably he's not just credible, lying yeah. to me for some political reason right or right, lying right. to himself or yeah. wanting to lie to himself so or, or whatever iteration so, so of much of that is it, yeah. just like the way you read people and whether you think yeah. you know and and 
Yeah, so I think we've proven that global climate change is clearly a hoax perpetuated by China. And as usual, folks, our our uh, episodes are usually just uh, a, a little, uh, you know, use an idea to just spark the excuse to have a random conversation. I mean, you're in a fucking frog suit. So. I'm in a frog suit, and my <laughs> face is now off the YouTube video because yeah. the camera we taped to the wall is now slowly falling. But don't worry, in part two, we'll prop it back up. We'll prop it right back up. <laughs> So join us in part two. We're going to get into like the specifics of plastics in it for pollution. Plastic. And Joe's been doing this like beach cleaning thing. And, oh, I'm in deep, um, baby. And 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 most importantly, theoretically, Johnny will be joining us. So oh, I really hope. I really hope. That's all I want for Christmas in yeah. July at this point. Half Christmas. Half Christmas, baby. So Coming we'll, up. We'll see you at half Christmas. Uh, all right. Dinner with. Thanks beer. for uh, tuning back in. Sorry, it's been so long. You know, for an episode. Like, we'll try to subscribe. get this one out asap, and then part two. We'll, well let's probably do it get right out. now. We'll do it right now. We'll do it live. Let's post it. We're gonna post it right now. Do you want it? I mean, it'll take like ten minutes, but. All right. I'll get. I'll get the all right, bye. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>